The ancient Greek philosopher Herlacticus was probably right when he said, there's nothing permanent except change. And in today's uncertain and rapidly changing environment, change is a constant. And we must all remember that high levels of uncertainty and rapid change make a manager's job even more complex. So in this session, we're now going to focus on change and we'll discuss how to manage change, if that is even possible. How good are you in dealing with change? Let's say on a scale of one to five, how good are you in dealing with change? Number one on the scale means that you're doing everything you can to prevent change from happening. And number five means that you're a champion for change. Are you a number one, a number five, or something in between? Think about that for a moment. 10 or 20 years ago, if you asked me that question, my answer would have been based on the conditions of the time. In other words, that was a time when there was more certainty and stability in business. And so that meant that change was less important to me in those days. In other words, things were pretty predictable back then. But change today, however, is very different from what it looked like 10 or 20 years ago. 20 years ago, change had a clearly defined start and end point, and it involved only a few people within an organization in general. Today, there's no end to change, and constant change affects everyone in every organization. So, why is it that change is more important in today's business environment than it was in my time. Maybe we can learn something from the large amount of research on the subject of change. And Professor John Cotter at the Harvard Business School has spent something like 40 years observing and researching change efforts in thousands of different organizational settings. So, what has Professor Cotter learned about organizational, organizational change during that long period of time? Well, we could put the lessons Professor Cotter learned into three different buckets. And bucket one is filled with the different purposes for change. For example, to increase revenues or profits or decrease our costs, to become more effective or more efficient in what we're doing, or both of the above, increase revenue and profits, decrease costs, and become more effective and more efficient. Bucket two could be filled with the reasons organizations need to change. For example, they might be falling behind the competition. They may not be prepared to compete in the future. They may be too slow to execute tactics in the marketplace. They may be too quick to execute tactics, but slow in thinking, strategizing and planning those tactics. Or they may be too slow to innovate. They may be too slow or ineffective when integrating mergers and acquisitions, or like when companies combine together, etc. They may be too siloed to achieve effective internal collaboration or communication. By siloed, we mean that departments and units in an organization are isolated from each other. And finally, bucket three could be filled with things that could help us to accelerate change. And we will discuss those more in a moment. But according to Professor Cotter at the Harvard Business School, 70% of all organizational change efforts fail. What do you think might be the reason for some of those failures of organizations to change? 
Well, according to Professor Cotter at Harvard, there are numerous reasons for failure. And in his research, he's identified eight change accelerators or steps which can prevent that failure from happening. So now you might be wondering, what are those eight steps? Well, according to Professor Cotter, those eight change accelerator steps are in importance or urgency or priority the following. Number one, creating a sense of urgency. Number two, forming an urgency team. Three, strategic vision. Four, volunteer army. Five, removing barriers to change. Six, short-term wins. Seven, sustaining acceleration. And finally, eight, anchoring change in the organization. In the next video, we will start to go through in more depth each of these eight Cotter Change Accelerators, which you need to understand.